Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. November 15th, 2017. The Cooner Report, presented by Kelly Financial Services. This is the Cooner Report. And now Sean Hannity turns on Roy Moore. Okay, is this now the beginning of the end? We're going to have that. You are not going to believe stories that are coming out now about sexual harassment, about politicians on Capitol Hill, and yes, a secret slush fund or a hush fund paid for by you and I. That's how they've been paying off these settlements. We're going to have that. Latest, another state trooper retires. This thing is getting bigger and bigger. Charlie Baker wants to confront the opiate uh, crisis, but is it more smoke and mirrors? And a special report at 205, social media and your children. Are your children becoming addicted to social media? And were they created to get your children hooked? You are not going to believe the stunning bombshell revelations from some of the co-founders of Facebook and others that they wanted your child hooked and they were planning it from the beginning. But first, is this now the beginning of the end? Yesterday on his Fox News show, Sean Hannity now joined the entire Republican Party establishment and essentially now he's giving Roy Moore 24 hours, but effectively he's cutting him loose. Sean Hannity said that Roy Moore has 24 hours to clear up some of the inconsistencies that he says appeared uh, with his interview with Hannity on his radio show and then what's come out in the next, uh, the subsequent following several days. And if these consistencies are not cleared up, Hannity says it is time for Roy Moore to get out. Listen now to Sean Hannity give Roy Moore an ultimatum. Come on my show, clear up all of these inconsistencies or alleged inconsistencies, or buddy, I'm going to be another one that puts a bullet right in your back. Roll it, Brit. Where I am tonight, between this interview that I did and the inconsistent answers, between him saying... I never knew this girl, and then that yearbook comes out. For me, the judge has 24 hours. You must immediately and fully come up with a satisfactory explanation for your inconsistencies that I just showed. You must remove any doubt. If you can't do this, then Judge Moore needs to get out of this race. This country has way too many issues and problems. The American people deserve a hundred percent truth and honesty we need correct answers the first time on issues this serious judge moore you owe that to the people of alabama the republican party that you represent and to the country which is suffering under so many problems and it's not just sean hannity and in fact in many ways i'll be honest i'm not really that surprised um he generally in the end follows the republican party line and so the Republican Party line is now that Roy Moore is a pariah. He is toxic. He is persona non grata. In fact, the Republican Party has now openly announced today that they prefer that the Democrat Doug Jones win. So the RNC, the Republican National Committee, has now said they will cut off all funding to Roy Moore. Mitch McConnell has now come out and said he would rather the Democrat win than Roy Moore. The Republican Party is now coming out and saying they would rather Doug Jones, the Democrat, win than Roy Moore. And the reason why they say is they fear that if Roy Moore does win, he will become the face of the Republican Party heading into the 2018 midterm elections. And they say their argument is that the Democrats will then campaign off of Roy Moore and hang him around the neck of every Republican candidate in every Senate or House race around the country. And so now they are openly siding with the Democrat in order to prevent Roy Moore from winning. 
In fact, the Wall Street Journal editorial page, really the mouthpiece for the Republican establishment, in an editorial today said it's time to cut Roy Moore loose, even if it delivers a serious blow to the Republican majority. And remember, they only have 52 seats, so they'll be cut now to 51 if Doug Jones wins. It doesn't matter. Roy Moore must now be jettisoned at all costs. Abandon Roy Moore, throw him overboard, toss him under the bus. Now, if you want to know why the Cooner Man will never be a regular on Fox News, or frankly on any of these other cable shows, just look at my column today, uh, and I urge everybody to read it on WRKO.com. It is called The Public Lynching of Roy Moore. And what I argue in my column is the following. And why these Republicans are running for the hills is frankly beyond me. Whether you believe Roy Moore is guilty or not, to me at this point, is irrelevant. As I point out in my column, I'm not saying Roy Moore is innocent, and I'm not saying Roy Moore is guilty. Because I don't know. And frankly, nobody else knows. There is no conclusive corroborating evidence, not even close. This is a he said, she said. The only people that really know are Roy Moore and the alleged victims. They're the ones who deep down know what they're saying is true or not. But what I am saying is that the very same media standards that have been applied to Democrats over the last 25 to 30 years, I'm sorry, should now be applied to Roy Moore. And I'm not going to get into Bill Clinton, who was uh, accused of sexually assaulting and raping numerous women. I'm not even going to get into Ted Kennedy, who was responsible for the murder, the death of a young woman. I'm not even going to get into Barney Frank, who ran a prostitution ring with his homosexual lover out of their apartment in Washington, D.C., in which underage boys were used to quote-unquote service clients, while, by the way, Barney was still in Congress. Because, you see, they were fit for office. In fact, Ted Kennedy was called the Lion of the Senate. Bill Clinton, the left ferociously defended him. Barney, nobody said that Barney should be kicked out of office or stripped of his job. I'm going to leave those aside. Let's talk Bob Benendez. As I lay out in my column, and this is irrefutable, New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez is now facing corruption charges. He's on trial. The jury appears deadlocked. We'll see what happens. But here's what's indisputable. Not 40 years ago, as the allegations against Roy Moore, but four years ago, four, four, several women have accused Bob Menendez of having sex with underage Dominican prostitutes, okay? prostitutes in the Dominican Republic, many of them as young as 16. And unlike Roy Moore, it's not a he said, she said. There's video footage of Menendez with the prostitutes. He's taking off his shirts, and you can see his flabby little chest, okay, as he's getting a little massage, and then leave, you know the rest. He's an accused pedophile. Now, Bob Menendez, if he beats these charges, Mitch McConnell has said he will kiss him on each cheek and warmly embrace him back. Paul Ryan, Menendez can come back. Chuck Schumer, John McCain, Ted Cruz, I can run down the whole list. Sean Hannity. Every... Everybody, CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, Washington Post, Bob Menendez can stay. Bob Menendez is back into the club. So let me get this straight. You're not going to strip him of a Senate seat. You're not going to expel him from the Senate. 
You're not going to declare his election null and void? So Menendez can have sex with 16-year-old prostitutes in the Dominican Republic. Pedophilia, statutory rape. Okay, He's having sex with underage girls. No problem. No problemo amigo. But Roy Moore, 40 years ago, on still unproven allegations, not for you, buddy. Not, hey, you Bible thumper, you, don't you even come close to the Senate. This is a blatant act of hypocrisy, double standards. This is political. This is a political witch hunt. It always has been. And to me, at this point, what are the elites afraid of? What are they afraid of? Let the people of Alabama decide. We let the people of New Jersey decide on Bob Menendez. We let the people of Massachusetts decide on Teddy Kennedy. We let the people of Massachusetts or whatever is congressional district decide on Barney Frank. We let the people of America ultimately decide on Bill Clinton. So why can, when it comes to liberal Democrats, they can rape women, murder women, uh, commit acts of pedophilia? The people can decide. But when it comes to Roy Moore, a Trump populist, a conservative insurgent, an outsider who wants to drain the swamp, he can't even run in the election. They won't even give the people of Alabama a choice. And so, as I point out in my column, this to me is the key point. And it's the biggest scandal. It's the one that should frighten all of you. That the elites of our country are now openly saying they are willing to subvert the will of the people in Alabama. To deny them their basic democratic rights to have an election because they fear that the people of Alabama will not vote the way they want them to vote because the latest polls show, believe it or not, Roy Moore is still ahead. A composition of polls, Roy Moore 49%, Doug Jones 43%. In other words, the liberal media, for all of their attempts to try to manipulate the election, still have not been able to successfully convince the people of Alabama. And so they want to take it out of their hands. Let the people decide. Let the people vote. This is still a democracy, isn't it? 617-266-6868 is the number. Okay, here is what the mainstream media refuses to play. Here is a clip of the stepson of Beverly Young Nelson. She is the last woman that came out with Gloria Allred, who claimed that Judge Roy Moore attempted to rape her in his car or sexually assault her outside of a dumpster when she was 16. Um, her stepson, she's still married, obviously, to the boy's father. You can tell it's killing him to do this. He even says he may be ostracized by his father and stepmother for doing this, but came out and um, taped a video. And he says, my stepmother is a liar. Roll it, Brittany. As, we, as I've said today, that I found out that my stepmother was one of the ladies that is accusing Judge Moore of an act that supposedly happened when she was a teenager. My father's name is John Allen Nelson. The woman that's committed this act against, as, against Mr. Moore is Beverly Young Nelson. It's hard for me to actually have this conversation, but it must be done. Mr. Moore, I support you. I don't believe the acts that she claims you've done. I, I don't believe it. I've known the woman. She married my father many, many years ago. 
I've known her for a while now. And I truly do not believe that she's being honest about this. You're a good judge. I've grown up. I've known your name since I was a kid. You cared about the Ten Commandments. You tried like hell to keep the Ten Commandments from being took out of the courthouse. I remember. In other words, you even have family members who are saying she's a liar, she's a sensationalist, don't believe her. I'm not saying that she's lying. Again, I don't know. The only people that do know are Roy Moore and Beverly Young Nelson and Lee Korfman, the, the, the two that have accused him of sexual assault. But look at the rush to judgment. Look how we're willing now to convict this man without even a public trial, without even giving him the opportunity to properly defend himself. Let the voters of Alabama be the ultimate judge and jury. And so my question to you is this. It is the Cooner Country poll question of the day, sponsored by Bill Kelly Financial Services. Do you think Roy Moore will step aside? Not should he, but will he? In this face of this withering pressure now, will Roy Moore step aside? If you believe he will eventually be forced to cave, Text the letter A to 680, 680. If you believe he will fight and fight and fight, text, in other words, no. Text the letter B to 680, 680. You can vote online at WRKO.com. Your calls, your reaction, next. For me, the judge has 24 hours. You must immediately and fully come up with a satisfactory explanation for your inconsistencies that I just showed. 1226 here on the great WRKO, 617-266-6868. Let me throw one more log on the fire. What do you make now of Sean Hannity, almost like Sheriff Sean, giving Judge Roy Moore 24 hours to sort of clear up these inconsistencies, or else he's going to pull his support? Like, what, we're going to have a, a showdown at high noon now? What, are you gonna, you're going to shoot the guy or something? I have two theories. Go ahead, Brittany. He caved to his advertisers, and or he knows that Trump is going to pull his support of Roy Moore, and he wants to be on the same page as Donald Trump. Interesting, Brittany. Interesting. Well, now all eyes are on Trump to see if he's going to put the final knife into Roy Moore's back. And maybe Hannity got a heads up that that's exactly what's going to happen, and he wants to wash his hands of the whole thing. Or as Brittany says, maybe he had that big flap with his advertisers over Roy Moore, and now he figures, you know what, uh, I took too much damage on this story. Like Seth Rich, let me just walk away while the getting is still good. Tom in New Jersey, you're up next. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, Jeff, God bless you, and, and prayers for the Kelly family, of course. We, 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 we'll, we will never forget them. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. But, Jeff, you completely nailed the Roy Moore issue. What I was hoping for today, were you going to be talking some Uranium One? Because that's what I'm loaded up for. I'm willing to go on hold if you're going to go there. Yeah, Tom, why don't you call back later? Because uh, I definitely will talk about Uranium right, One. Throw me on hold, Big Jeff. Okay, you got it, Tom. Uh, no, look, let me just say one more thing. What is clear is that Judge Roy Moore is collateral damage in the war between McConnell and Bannon. So what McConnell did, you can tell, the Republican operatives, the never-Trumpers, with the Washington Post said, this guy beat Luther Strange, and so it's not enough that they want to nullify Trump's selection. It's not enough now that they want to nullify Roy Moore's primary victory over Luther Strange. Now they want to nullify the actual election on December 12th. That's the real story here. And so this is a proxy war between McConnell and Bannon. And what McConnell is now doing is he's calling all of his chips, and he says, I don't care if the Democrats win this seat, but more in particular, Bannon must go down. Jerry on the Cape. Go ahead, Jerry. Jeff, good afternoon. Thanks for taking the call. Go ahead. Jeff, Gateway Pundit, they're about to break a story. 
about a Secret Service agent that's come agent that's come forward. He says that three individuals will come forward, you know, in due time. The Secret Service agents also had to protect female agents around this individual. They had to cancel a Christmas party for Secret Service and Navy personnel assigned to this person's family. And in 2009, a Secret Service agent was suspended for a week for an altercation with this individual, and others had to step in because this individual groped and ogled this, this Secret Service agent's wife, none other than former Vice President Joe Biden. Really? That's going to, Cassandra Fairbanks broke this. Okay, Jerry, I'm going to watch for that story. If well, that happens, woohoo. Well, I got to say, I mean, I don't want to jump, I don't want to jump ahead of this, but remember, oh, was it Ashton Carter? Yes, it was. When he was massaging the wife yeah. on the shoulders of Ashton, when Ashton Carter was being sworn in. Remember, there was <laughs> Joe the buffoon. He's creepy, though. He is creepy. I mean, he's always like in women's spaces. He's always touching them, massaging them. So I got to tell you, if that story does uh, does break open, if the if, if that story does break, I would not be shocked. I really would not be shocked. Six one seven two six six sixty eight sixty eight. Look, I can just tell you this, okay? Cooner country, God as my witness, I I you can just trust. Me. I have never inappropriately touched, uh, harassed, uh, even looked at another woman. I mean, Capitol Hill, these sexual predators are coming out of the woodwork. I'm telling you, as far as Cooner Man's concerned, I have never inappropriately touched, groped, or even looked at another woman in my life. That should at least give you some comfort. At least somebody out there isn't grabbing women by the you-know-what. 617-266-6868. For the latest, Jackie Murphy in the newsroom. Where I am tonight, between this interview that I did and the inconsistent answers, between him saying, I never knew this girl, and then that yearbook comes out. For me, the judge has 24 hours. You must immediately and fully come up with a satisfactory explanation for your inconsistencies that I just showed. Sean Hannity now essentially bails on Judge Roy Moore. Uh, Fox News now pretty much is now in the anti-Roy Moore camp, uh, joining the entire Republican Party, the entire establishment, the entire liberal media, and of course the entire Democratic Party. So all of the odds are now stacked against the judge. Uh, they're now even saying even if he wins, they will not seat him and they will expel him from the U.S. Senate. This is how much they fear Judge Roy Moore. And so my question to you is this. Do you think Roy Moore will step down? Should he step down? And did Sean Hannity just cave? 617-266-6868. Lines are loaded. Let's go to Arthur in Chestnut Hill. Go ahead, Arthur. Hey, yeah, uh, Jeff. If the Republicans have their way, okay, and uh, and, and uh, Judge Roy Moore uh, does not win, and that that means it'll be easy for the Democrat to win, okay, then that's the end of the uh, Trump agenda in the Senate, and and now they have their excuse. This is another way to destroy Trump, uh, because this guy is definitely in the Trump column. And by the way, I've heard people in Alabama all speak, okay. And and they're not like a lot of the people up here. They will support uh, Roy, and and he shouldn't get off the ballot. And he is going to win. This is the same crap they pulled with uh, Trump when he was running. How are we going to get him? And if he's president, how are we going to get him from? Not, you know, when we go in for the uh, for the electoral college, we're not going to vote, and he's not going to get. Uh, this is all stuff that they're threatening that they won't do because uh, they lose in the in court. Uh, Arthur, thank you very much for that call. You're dead on, my friend. Lisa in Peabody. Go ahead, Lisa. Hi, Jeff. I appreciate you taking my call. My pleasure. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head when you talked about, is this still a democracy? Uh, because that's a very good question. Let me preface this as an attorney, um, an appellate attorney, uh, fighting for the Constitution every day. More importantly, I'm hoping my message is heard especially um, I myself was a victim of sexual assault when I was 13 years old. So um, I stand with 
uh, Judge Moore, and this, when I saw Sean Hannity's show last night, what even floors me even more so was Judge Janine and coming out as a prosecutorial uh, perspective. Um, I, it's a good thing I was lying down because I would have fell down. Um, so uh, there's a real big problem here as to uh, the principles of giving Lisa uh, Judge Moore a sti- you know. Lisa, sorry, I mean to cut you off, but I want to ask you this. Guilty. Lisa, I want to ask you a very obvious question, and if I'm getting too personal, please let me know. What you as a victim of sexual assault yourself at the young age of 13, why are you sympathetic to Roy Moore? I would figure because of your background and your experience having, you know, dealt with somebody who sexually assaulted and abused you that you would identify with the victims and say, throw this bum out. Because you can't lead with emotion. And is that not the problem with liberalism? Okay, it's you have to think. You know, it's not about emotion here. You need to follow the principles, the facts. And I don't see number one. Is this supposed to be tried in the uh, the media here? Because uh, he's being accused of a very very serious offense. And I, I tell you, I'm just. It's just so shocking to see Sean Hannity and and Judge Janine take those very concepts that they've they've you know heralded for years and you know talk about cave in. They well, I think him in the back. no, you're right. No, look, Lisa, look, they they put a bullet to his head, and thank you for that call. The proverbial bullet to the head. Look, the media has now anointed itself as judge, jury, and executioner. That's what they've done. On the flimsiest of evidence. And let's be honest, okay, as the French would say, entre nous, among us, the reason why they are prosecuting and destroying this man, come on, let's not, let's not beat around the bush. He's a Christian. He's not just a Christian, he's a conservative Christian. And he's a Trump populist. Now, I know Trump didn't endorse him. He endorsed Luther Strange. So he's not really Trump's candidate. He's not. But he supports Trump's agenda. And the one thing about Judge Roy Moore, everybody knows this, the deep state doesn't own him. You see, that's why McConnell hates him. You can't control this guy. Because just look at him. His loyalty will be to the people of Alabama. You can see it all over his face. So they can't control him in the swamp. That's why there's a rush to judgment. Now, as for Sean Hannity, look, it's why I've said it before, and I'm really being candid with you, okay? Let me, my wife's going to yell at me for saying this. We have the ratings to be a very big nationally syndicated show. I'm telling you right now, we've also been, we've been bought up by iHeart, so we'll see what happens. They're the biggest radio network in the country. But one of the reasons why Jeff Cooner will never make it on Fox, I'm just being candid, or CNN or MSNBC or anywhere else, I'm not corporate. I'm just not. Look at my column today. I wrote it to Grace last night. I sent her the column. I said, this is why I will never be a regular on Fox News. Too politically incorrect, too independent. And in a nutshell, it's called the public, lyn- it's called the public lynching of Roy Moore. I urge you to please read it, send it off to as many people as possible. Because I have friends at Fox News who have told me this, producers, who say, Jeff, we love your column. We love it. Nobody wants to have you on. You know why? Because they can't refute it. Because the moment you went to Bob Menendez, it was checkmate. Checkmate. So why Roy Moore, but not Bob Menendez? Why? They're literally accused. In fact, there's a lot more evidence with Menendez. There's videotape. Doesn't matter. The corporate line was given. Roy Moore has to go. Period. Full stop. And everybody has to fall in line. Now, what Mitch McConnell may be too cute by half, but what he's trying to do is he's now floating this idea, and I want to run it by all of you. 617-266-6868. Mitch McConnell, with the Wall Street Journal, 
is now floating the idea of having Jeff Sessions resign as Attorney General and put him on as a write-in candidate. In other words, Sessions, who is beloved, very popular in Alabama, uh, he was senator for many terms, many years, they say get him out of being Attorney General, have him come on as the write-in candidate, and they think he's still so popular in Alabama that even as a write-in candidate, he would beat both Roy Moore and Doug Jones. This would salvage the seat for the Republicans and then open up a vacancy as Attorney General. Now, who Trump wants to fill in is up to him. But what I'm thinking is, if we got a Sessions out, this is what I just find interesting, if they got Sessions out as Attorney General, maybe Trump could appoint somebody, I don't know, Rudy Giuliani, somebody that will appoint a special prosecutor and really go after Hillary Clinton. Because this morning, Sleepy Sessions has, the, uh, has again disappointed. He's disappointed us again. Now he's coming out and saying, just because, his words, it looks, his words, looks like, unquote, Hillary is guilty, doesn't mean that's enough for a special counsel. I'm like, what? If she looks like she's guilty, that's not enough for a special counsel? What do you need? A ton of bricks to fall on your head? He doesn't want to pull the trigger when it comes to going after Hillary Clinton. And so maybe the play here is that McConnell and Trump, I know, have spoken. It's been reported. McConnell says, you want Sessions out. We want to win that seat in Alabama, but not ju Judge Roy Moore. So you give us Sessions. We'll put him on the ballot as a write-in. You get rid of Sessions. We can still hold on to that seat, and you can appoint somebody that will really go after Hillary. Should Sessions resign and be a write-in candidate in Alabama, you kill two birds with one stone. You get a new attorney general who hopefully will go after Hillary, and you get a candidate that is known and loved in Alabama that can still hold that seat for the Republicans. 617 266 6868. Mike in Milbury. Go ahead, Mike. I'm going to be blunt, buddy. I love you. You love me. But I'll tell you what, as a little league dad, my petty meter is very high. This guy's a creep. I can smell a creep a mile away. These, these women, they're credible. His explanations are not. It's not how you would act. It's not how I would act. It's not how anyone who would act if they're innocent. And I love the idea. Get this bum out, put Sessions in, put Judge Jeanine Pero in as Attorney General. Anybody but, but, but Jeff Sessions. This is a perfect move. It's 3D chess. Who knows, maybe Steve Bannon thought this whole thing up just to get out Jeff Sessions. It's a great idea. Uh, Mike, uh, I have two kids as well, so I really understand where you're coming from. Mike, let me just ask you this, just to play devil's advocate. Sure. What about that uh, Judge Moore has said he's going to sue the Washington Post, that he's willing to go under oath and fight these allegations? The sense I get, Mike, is this. Now, you may disagree with me. I okay. think he's lied about not dating teenage girls. I think he Bingo. did date teenage girls. Bingo. But dating teenage girls doesn't mean he raped them or attempted to rape them or assault them. I'm not even saying that. I would never go that far. You know, I'm not going to go that far. Has he did? He's he was in his thirties and he's prowling Orange Julius down at the mall. Yes, that's what he's doing. Okay, it makes all of us look bad. We don't need that. We don't need our names attached to somebody like this. We don't need to defend somebody like that. There are better conservative Christians out there that we can get behind. We got to stop getting behind scoundrels and bums and defending them. This guy, if he wants to, if he swears he's innocent. Let him prove it. Let him step up to the plate, take allegation by allegation, woman by woman, person by person, and let him defend himself. I haven't seen that. I see him go in, the, in these, invoking the name of Jesus and Mary and, and Joseph. Are you kidding me? Are you seriously kidding me to do something that low and despicable? That's when I knew he was a phony, when he had his supporters invo invoking the name of Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Come on. So, Come Mike, on. We're better than this. We're better than this. We don't need 
to defend a creep like this. Mike, what you want him to do is call a major news conference and just answer every question. Just stand yeah. there and go, let me go allegation by allegation by allegation, question yeah. after question after question. Let, let him, yeah, exactly. Feet to the fire. I'm innocent. I want to clear my name. This is wrong. Let me take your questions. I'm not running. I'm not going to hide from anything. And if he's innocent, he's innocent. But you know, we both know there's something sketchy about the guy. Okay, he's dating. He was probably dating 17 or 18 year olds or trying to. I don't think he even did anything improper. But I think he was trying to hit on these young girls. Maybe he felt them up a time or two. But we don't need this. We're better than this. Mike, thank you very much for that call. 617-266-6868. More with your reaction next. Russ in Boston. You're up next. Go ahead, Russ. You know, Jeff, seriously, I'm a person that believes in equal justice for everyone, okay? Now, on equal justice, there is no way that this person should... Uh, uh, he should not continue to run, and hopefully he'll get elected. I don't care what Sean Hannity or any of the rest of them have to say. As far as the yearbook is concerned, seriously, it's 40 years later. He's going to remember someone that looked, uh, what they looked like 40 years ago in their name. Uh, maybe he didn't have any much uh, communication with, with the woman at, at that time. So that's really a lame, a lame angle to use on this guy. And I dislike the fact that we have double standards in this country. If you're a Democrat, you can get away with whatever whatever it is, and if you're a Republican, you're put through the litmus test. It's just it's it's just it's awful, Jeff. It's unfair. No, and I, that's the point of my column. It's just not fair. So that to me, you want the proper answer to this? Let it. Let the people of Alabama decide. Let the voters in Alabama decide. Leave it to them. They should be, in theory, right? We're still a democracy. They should be the ultimate judge and jury. So let why why are they so afraid? Let the people of Alabama vote. They'll decide. Uh, Tom in Hampton, I've got one minute. Go, Tom. Hi, uh, Jeff. Um, I just want to ask you a question. Yes. Uh, the question is: be before this election. These Republicans, they were more Democratic than they were Republicans. That's one thing I want to say. The other thing is, I think the Jeff Sessions thing is, you're, you stole my thunder on that, and I think they want to undermine, the uh, uh, Jeff Sessions has been compromised. I think they want to undermine the investigation and put Trump in a box where he is going to be severely hampered. And on Chan Sean Hannity, I am shocked about it, but I'm not surprised that the uh, sponsors are taking him down in these He's bent into the pressure. Uh, thank you very much for that call, Tom. Okay, you're going to want to listen to this next segment. Oh, oh. you want to see corruption in Washington? They have a secret slush fund whereby lawmakers in Congress use our money to pay off their settlements and then, and then impose gag orders so nobody can hear it. Unbelievable story. Don't touch that dial. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence, Boston. It's 1 o'clock.